Good afternoon, this is the Old Farts Channel and today we're having a day by the seaside but we're not outside, we're inside talking about feminism and we've got Gemma Morgan who's very mm, very kindly taken time off from writing her dissertations uh, to uh, come and put us straight on what's going on with feminism and uh, I'm hoping it's gonna, we're going to all learn heaps from it and uh, so what we're, what we're going to do, we're probably going to do this as a two-parter but we'll see how things go, um, because what we'd like to know is, obviously, how far down the road to achieving equality in feminism that are we, uh, and maybe part two as to what else needs to be done. So maybe the story so far, we could start with that. Sounds like a plan. Good. Yes. Well, yeah. it's, <laughs> plans, whatever. Yeah. They'll probably end up as a drinking game, knowing yeah. us anyway. So whatever. Um, right. So, tell us what you tell us what you reckon so far. I mean, obviously, we're going back when when people when we were looking for the vote for a start. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think it, first of all, yeah, I do think it's really important that we talk about what's happened so far yeah. and do not get wrapped up in the negativity of where we're not equal. I think actually we have come really far. Yeah, the vote is a major one um, to talk about that we were discussing earlier. It happened in 1918, women got the vote, um, but only if they were over 30 and had a, was it a stately home or a, a certain level a of income? A substantial home, I think, was the wording home. in the bill, Yeah, which was a coal uh, another coalition of the Tories and the Liberals, yeah. fair enough, and Sinn Féin. <laughs> so they, they're all to blame. Yeah, <laughs> so it's sort of a, a nice attempt really, but uh, didn't really hit the mark. Um, but then it's obviously extended and now women can vote, no matter... It took another 10 years though. Took, yeah, another yeah. 10 years, 1928 <laughs> until all women could vote um, and the deaths of various suffragettes and men as well that suffered trying to fight for equality. Um, and yeah, back in the late 1900s, they realised that women were, could represent important institutions like hospital boards and school boards and do a really great job. Why the fuck didn't they give them the vote then? But never mind, that's yeah, another... That's, that's, <laughs> they were happy for them to be running things, but not for them to have a say in it. It just seems a bit... Yeah. A bit backwards. So, obviously, that's but the voting was, is only part... Yeah, it's part, only part of it. I mean, yeah. it's sort of... All of these big steps are like symbols of what's happening. I mean, after the vote, there was... The pill, I would say, was probably the next big step for women because that was a massive impact in women having ownership over their bodies yeah. and their reproductive sort of organs, yeah. essentially. I mean, you're saying when when they wanted to have a baby, when they wanted to have a baby. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think that's yeah really important for women to know that their bodies are owned by themselves, and I think there was a sort of tendency for, well, there was a literal time where men owned their wives and I think gaining control over their own bodies was part of the step to women feeling like they could gain control over other areas of their life but as that well. that knocked on from the Victorian times? Because mm. I, I, I hesitate to say this, but my father, who would let my mother have anything she wanted, but he, in a cupboard, in a wardrobe, in a box, he used to give her a weekly allowance mm. for all the food and bits and pieces. So she had to basically go to that and get the, that, the money for that week to go out and do shopping yeah. and things. And but if she wanted a dress or something, she used to have to go and ask for it, which was like, at the time, I never thought much about it. Mm. But now, like, you think, what? Yeah. And but if she, of course, my father died, and my mother I had to go to my mother's house to teach her how to write a cheque. Wow. She didn't even know how yeah. to write a cheque. But I think, like, people did that, and because it was such a normal way of life, I don't, like, people loved each other and still did that. That was just how things were done. It doesn't mean that those okay. individual people I mean, didn't yeah. care about women. It's just sort of, like, the culture of it. I mean, that happened to my parents as well, and I'm 30, and I remember my dad giving my mum a, like, housekeeping allowance and the exact same thing, having to, if she wanted something for herself, she almost had to justify it. Um, I mean, she's now gone on and got a job now, and now everything that she has, she pays for herself. Yeah. Um, and I think she's much happier for it. Right. Yeah. I mean, women did f uh, got, didn't have to fight back, but my mother, at 61 years old, went and took a driving test, mm. 
and used to, and, and passed first time and used to drive all the way to North Wales in a little metro yeah. um, uh, on, on the M1 and the M6. I th I th what a brave thing to do, really, mm. when you when you start something so late in life. Yeah. It's, uh, and but I was uh, very proud of her, to be honest. But uh, once you once you learnt the fact that you didn't have to pull out the choke every time you started it up, <laughs> but we won't go into that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So she learned to drive at six. That is brave because yeah. I'm thirty and learning to drive, and it's a nightmare. But I digress. Anyway. Yes, yeah. but no. The, the thing is, yeah. though, it, it, think yeah. some people do. Yeah. You know, but the thing is, you've got the choice. Yeah. She went for lessons with my father. He used to shout at her, and mm. she stopped. Yeah. Because you know, because he just didn't have the temperament. He he could afford to send her out on lessons, but he wanted to do it himself. Mm. And people, it was like this that almost like controlling thing. Yeah. That was wrong, which I thankfully it didn't pass on as with me because mm. I I just said to uh, my wife, "There's the checkbook. Go and get what you want. <laughs> You're in charge." I'm going to go out and earn the money, you run it. Yeah. And if you don't want to go to work, you don't have to. Um, and, and she didn't. But she ran everything and she knew, she was. You know, she had full control of her life and she wanted to buy something, she could say, she had to work out if she could afford it or not, and she could. Yeah. And I think that's, I think that's, a, so that's, a, that's in the sort of uh, 70s, if you like, how things have changed around yeah. from there. But obviously, there are other aspects, uh, I presume, that uh, are things that have improved along the way. Yeah, I mean, working is a major thing. Um, women working, um, obviously, it used to be looked down on and sort of the women's role was at home. But I think even now, as women are in the workplace and more prominent positions in the workplace as well, yeah. we are managers, we are CEOs, yeah. we're not represented as much as men, and we're also still not paid as much as men. I know the Equality, the Equal Pay Act was in 1970, Google that. Um, right. Google is <laughs> uh, our friend. <laughs> so legally you can't pay someone, you can't, if a man and a woman are doing the same job legally you cannot pay them different amounts of money if there's no sort of justifiable reason for it. But women are still paid less than men overall. So is that in law? Yeah, the Equal Pay Act, yeah. So if you and me were doing the exact same job. Who the hell the wrote that one? The exact same amount. Uh, so, that's so, ridiculous. Yeah. So now women are well. The law is that women and men should be paid equally, but the reality is that it just isn't happening because women work part time. Generally, they're the ones that fit in work around childcare because they're the ones that go on maternity leave. Yeah. Um, and because uh, there's definitely a trend for people not wanting to employ women of a certain age because they worry about them going on maternity leave. I can sort in some ways mm. if you're running like a a two or three man business, yeah. you can sort of see where they're coming from because frankly having to employ somebody temporarily and, and keep the job mm. open like in a, in a small, small business environment, yeah. and it could be a key worker, uh, whatever is a key worker yeah. in a small business like that. But, so I saw, you know, but then again, women have the right to have that baby and that's cast in stone in law mm. and uh, but somewhere along the way it, everything gets uh, well cast in stone and and, and and there needs to be a bit of movement somewhere along the way there to needs help. to be some balance I think small businesses in particular really need some support from like the government or yeah. some outside agency need because uh, yeah if I was working for you and I went off on maternity leave not only have you got to pay my wages for that maternity leave, you've got to also pay someone else's wages to do my job while I'm not there. And you've got a and you can't give them an, a long contract because yeah. you might want to come back to work. Yeah. So. You, yeah. So so with so everybody's trying. I think I'm sure everybody means well. Yeah. Uh, uh, to to give people the chance, but what's actually happening uh, is that they're not. And you know, in the you know, I just think we need to sort of it all needs to be looked at. But at the moment, everybody's all what everybody's bleating on about, and obviously is that after that huge crash, that we owe mm, trillions or yeah. a trillion or something, and, and that's all, all everybody's worrying about. But at the same time, while we're bu building back and getting back to where we should be, we still need to give women their rights. Is what is is what your proposal is? Yeah, I think there's still a long way to go. I think the major thing is fair pay and giving women yeah. enough sort of access and ways of getting equal pay and I think the other issue that I have majorly at the moment with Britain is, well Britain and the western world is a sort of objectification 
of women and the rape culture that I think exists in England, um, which is ba basically the way that rape um, statistics show that like 6% of all reported rapes actually end up in a conviction and this whole culture of victim blaming and asking what women were wearing when it happened, what were they drinking, like were they asking for it, stuff like that. I think that's probably a big issue in Britain at the moment. You know, I had no idea that that was the sort of numbers we're looking at. Yeah. And, and, and this is, and this, is this needs, we're talking about you know, major sea changes to sort this thing out, because 6%, so basically, they're just not believing women. At yeah, all, there's ever. a lot of yeah, there's oh, a lot of oh, it's your word against his, and oh well, like you were seen with him earlier in the evening, or like people, how much were you drinking? How much can you really say you remember? And I'm not saying that false rape accusations don't happen, and they do, but I think the way uh, yeah. it's on, very on smart, six small per, amount, six percent, yeah, of, of, of uh, and convictions, yeah, uh, I don't think so, yeah, uh, that's yeah. It's, that's ridiculous, and I didn't have no idea. It's, yeah, this is this is the point of these chats mm. that where we think everything in the garden is lovely, yeah, um, and that you know, and my, you know, and we we find, suddenly find out things are completely different. Now I I look on the point of view that I treat women absolutely equally in my life. Yeah. And I can then say, okay, that's all okay. But if the institutions, the government, and everybody who controls this country mm. isn't treating women equally, and I let them do it, I'm as bad as them. Yeah, but then so am I as well for Yeah, not, because we're not, yeah. well then again, you, you are gonna get up and have a shout about it. Yeah. I'm just burying my head and going, yeah. well, I'm, all, I'm, I'm being a good boy. I treat women fairly. Uh, but others who I vote in perhaps yeah. are not. So at the end of the day, that's, <laughs> I just wonder how I find it all appalling and it's, and it's one of the many things, I've, as I've suddenly get into retirement, I don't have to think about work. Uh, I can start thinking about things and fairness in, yeah. in society. Um, and that's why I, I'm, I, I started all this off. And I think that it's, uh, it's important that we, you know, us in our 50s and 60s who think all oh, of the garden is lovely. The fact is it isn't. And we've got heaps and heaps to go. Yeah. So I think what we can, you know, we're going to, I think, I'm in total agreement. I think we need to talk about where we're going to go in the future. But I do like splitting these up, so I'm going to run it as two. Okay. And, yeah. and, and we'll just have a cup of tea and then we'll have a, and then we'll go that. So for the minute, we're going to sign off. If you've got any comments that you'd like to make, you can, uh, there is a, um, an email and it's comments at the oldfartschannel.com. Send us your comments because there will be a gap between these. And if we go, if we need to do a third, recording i know you're really really busy but yeah. if we need to do something it's really important that we get this across and uh, and i'm with you on this one so uh, so let's talk we'll talk again that's the end of part one and we'll uh, get part two and then we'll see where we go from there thanks very much for watching